So when we called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do, we discussed many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul, Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. So when we called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do, we discussed many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul, Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. So when we called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do, we discussed many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul, Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. So when we called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do, we discussed many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul, Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless.
called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do. We discussed many names. And then one name that emerged was Amur. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amurya in Sanskrit means priceless. So when we called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do, we discussed many names. And then one name that emerged so was when we called in some Anand marketing skills Milk Union to advise us what to do. And Amulya in Sanskrit we discussed means many priceless. Names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. So when we called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do, we discussed many names. And then one name that emerged so was when we called in some Anand marketing skills Milk Union to advise us what to do. And Amulya in Sanskrit we discussed means many priceless. Names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. When we called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do, we discussed many names. And then one name that emerged so was when we called in some Anand marketing skills Milk Union to advise us what to do. And Amulya in Sanskrit, we discussed many priceless. names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless.
So when we called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do, we discuss many names. And then one name that emerged. So, so when, when we called, called in some Anand marketing skills to advise us what to do, and Amulya in Sanskrit, we discuss many priceless. names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. And Amulya in Sanskrit we discuss discuss many priceless. Names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. And Amulya in Sanskrit, we discuss many priceless. Names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. Amulya in Sanskrit, we discuss priceless. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless.
when we called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do, we discussed many names. And then one name that in my so when we called in some marketing milk union to advise us what to do, and Amulya in Sanskrit, we discussed many names. And then one name that in my was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. So when we called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do, we discussed many names. And then one name that emerged so was when we called in some marketing milk union to advise us what to do. And Amulya in Sanskrit, we discussed many priceless. names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. So when we called in some marketing milk union to advise us what to do, and Amulya in Sanskrit, we discussed many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. So when we called in some marketing milk union to advise us what to do, and Amulya in Sanskrit, we discussed many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless.
use of marketing skills to advise the world. We will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged. So when, when we called in some marketing skills, skills you need to, to advise the world. And Amulya in Sanskrit, we will discuss, discuss many priceless. names. And then one, one name that emerged was Amulya. Anand Milk Union Limited and Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless.
when we call in some marketing skills to advise us what to do, we will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul, Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do. We will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amul good morning, sir. Welcome. means priceless. Do I audible, sir? I think your microphone is on mute. Can you? Am I audible? called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do. We will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul, Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya and Sanskrit Sir has joined, so I prices. think we can start the official meeting. Good morning all. I am honored and delighted to welcome you all for the Dr. Vergis Kurian Lecture Series Part 2. Let us start this auspicious occasion by involving the blessings of God Almighty. Inviting Gauri Nandana. Sachidanandarupani Sasneha Kedarami Sattaya Margam Tilichiduka Satya Swarupa Vipu Ni Sachidanandarupani Jeevita Nuga Bhuvaneshwara kai tola ni sachidananda rupani For welcoming our speaker and gatherings, inviting Assistant Professor Anju Anacharyan, Head of the Department, Food and Quality Control, Eastern College for him. Good morning, one and all. Dr. Vergi Spurian, 
Much has already been written and said about his personal and professional qualities. A visionary that helped in building a chain of institutions, Irma occupies a place of pride among the various achievements of Dr. Valgis Kuhn. Capacity building and professional management of dairy cooperatives was his passion. He made Amul a household name. Dr. Kurian was also deeply interested in developments in biotechnology, with particular reference to biotechnology with improving milk yield. The lecture series in his name is being held to commemorate his memory and, and achievements in the science of food to the nation and to the world. We have two eminent resource persons who will lead our technical sessions today. Mr. Aminullah Abuza is the Assistant Compliance Manager in the Quality Assurance Department at the, at the Kuwait Danish Dairy. A postgraduate in food science and technology in the year 2005, Mr. Aminullah Abuza majored in dairy science. Work experience of 18 years in the dairy industry with 13 years in KBD as well as experience in the production department and quality control department are added feathers to his professional field. On this occasion, we, the BCM family and all gathered here, wholeheartedly welcome you, sir, to the second Dr. Vergis Kurin lecture series where you kindly consented to be our resource person for technical session one. A very warm welcome is extended to you, sir. Ms. Veena Swati is the Quality Assurance Officer at Inkel Ventures Private at Kinfra Park, Elemanur Patnam Thitta. Ma'am completed her post-graduation from MacFast Tinwala with a degree in Food Technology and Quality Assurance. A very warm welcome is extended to you, Madam, and a special thank you for consenting to lead Technical Session 2 in this lecture series. Heartfelt welcome is extended to participants, both staff and students from other colleges, extending a very, very warm welcome to you all. Last but not the least, a cordial welcome to my dear colleagues and students. Once again, a very warm welcome is extended to one and all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Inviting our resource person for the day, Mr. Aminullah Abu, sir. Assistant Compliance Manager, Quality Assurance Department, Kuwait Danish Dairy to lead the technical session one titled Food Safety in Dairy Industry. Sir, you are not audible. So we are not able to hear you.
Hello. Yes, sir, you're on the phone. Yeah. Now it's very deep. Yes, sir, you're audible, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I will now join through this. Okay, uh, myself, I'm Anul Abuzar. I am a dairy technologist. I, hand, I have done my master's in 2005 and now 18 years working in dairy company uh, in different positions. Currently, I am working as assistant compliance manager and uh, that means handling all the audits and uh, all the non-conforming issues. And uh, now, sorry for wasting your time. And uh, we will start with food safety presentation. Now the question is how I will connect that. Uh, wait. If I join again. Okay. Again, Hello. Hello. Hello.
Hello. There is still an echo. No, no sir. sir, no echo at all. No echo now. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I will make it full mode. And sorry for interruption. Okay, uh, now the question is like, uh, we'll start the presentation and we will go through the slides and and if you guys have any question, you can uh, ask at the end. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, we'll start with the basic, it's, it's a basic introduction and what is food poisoning and what is food safety and what is contamination. So I will be presenting that. And uh, now uh, first we'll say what is food poisoning. So food poisoning is any unpleasant illness which is normally occur within one to 36 hours of eating contaminated or poisoned food. So these are basic introductions. What, what will happen in, uh, in if there is any food safety issue. So second is food spoilage. So food spoilage means food spoilage can be defined as disagreeable change in food's normal state, which such changes can be detected by smell, touch or sight. These changes are due to several reasons air, oxygen, moisture, light, and microbiological growth. So the one with the microbiological growth will result in food poisoning. Okay. Um, there are three types of contamination. One is microbiological contamination. One is chemical contamination. One is physical contamination. Now, if through any source, microorganisms are entering your food. This will be microbiological contamination. So these sources can be hands, uncleaned utensils, or any other uh, wrong storage conditions, which will lead to the growth of the microorganisms in the food. Second is chemical contamination. So, chemicals like detergents, soaps, any other cleaning chemicals, if they enter the food, they, it will be chemical contamination. Third is physical contamination. So physical means anything which can enter, uh, which we can see, feel or touch is physical. So examples are hair, nails, spins, anything. So this is the most worst contamination because when we are working, and especially we see this problem, someone's hair, someone's uh, any button or anything can fall into the uh, product and it will contaminate. So for to avoid this con physical contamination, we are implementing uh, PPEs. PPEs are pers personal protective equipments and uh, there are hair nets, there are gloves, there are sleeves. So these are the things. And plus uniforms, which does not contain any pockets or any loose items. So physical contamination is protected by using PPEs. Okay, what is cross-contamination? 
cross contamination is among different items or products if there is any traveling of contamination from one product to other product suppose if you are using uh, or keeping meat and milk in in the same place or you are keeping the chemicals or products in the same place there will be cross contamination which is not visible to us but there will be so in in uh, our practice we especially when you guys are keeping something in the fridge so try to segregate them according to the type of food and you same thing like we are using uh, say cleaning sponge so the sponge we are using for cleaning of uh, dishes or utensils should not be used for cleaning of any other uh, like table or any other stuff so it will cross transfer the uh, contamination from one surface to the other surface same thing with the hands when we are going to washroom or we are touching some dirty stuff or garbage bag we should not be uh, we should wash our hands and then touch any food item so if we don't do that there will be chances of transferring the bacteria from one place to other place so uh, segregation is the main uh, thing how we can uh, avoid the cross contamination use of color coded cleaning tools like what you are using at home for kitchen for uh, rest of the house for toilets it should be completely different items what we should use and systematic cleaning program personal hygiene zoning zoning uh, we do zoning like this area is high risk zone this area is low risk zone so according to that we divide the so in this high risk zone we will need special equipment special cleaning so that's how we do zoning and to avoid such a sensitive product area to non sensitive product area and control of wooden pellets we have added it's is not actually related to you so as i mentioned uh, the uniforms or the clothes should not be the same what we keep uh, if we go to washroom or toiletries we should change our dress in in case of industrial uh, implementation at home we cannot avoid that but uh, we do that so it's separate uniform we are keeping and then we can avoid cross contamination so this is a small uh, indication of how we divide the cleaning tools like brush wipers uh, mop so we give them color coding that this area is only for high risk food area and this is for low risk and this is for toilets this is for stores so that's how it doesn't transfer any kind of uh, materials or contamination from one area to the other area uh, cotton gloves are or gloves any ppes we are using vinyl gloves they are used for uh, and they should be disposable so if you work at one station you should dispose and then put the new pair of gloves uh, to avoid any chances of cross contamination so uh, hygiene is food safety in food safety is more than cleanliness it includes all practices involved in preventing food contamination from harmful bacteria poisons and foreign bodies preventing multiplication to extent that which can result in illness of consumers or early spoilage of food destroying harmful bacteria in the food by heating and processing discarding unfit or contaminated food okay this is basically you guys are studying already uh, but this is basically uh 
basic types of food food poisoning bacteria food spoilage bacteria and useful bacteria now uh, two types say salmonella and staphylococcus aureus are the reason for food food spo poisoning and cannot be detected by taste or smell very harmful due to detection in uh, difficulty in detection food spoilage bacteria can be detected by smell taste color or texture of the food relatively harmless because of ease of detection so in case if the food is contaminated and it's spoiled we can detect it by visually by seeing the food and by smelling the food so but food poisoning bacteria doesn't mean that it will have any bad smell or any changes in the physical appearance of the food so once it is consumed it can give you food poisoning so how like you know the bacteria how they work they when they enter our body or any any other cell or food they consume the especially the sugars okay and then they produce gases and then they transform into can be into poisonous uh, materials or some other harmful materials so in that case uh, the we can see if there is foam kind of stuff on the food there is separation in the food so that's how we can identify the food is spoiled not only by smell useful bacteria now you guys know that uh, a lot of bacteria we are using for uh, our uh, foods which we are making uh, that is yogurt cheese uh, we have in uh, middle east a product called labne labne is like a cheese and there is a product called laban so these are also fermented products and we are using it uh, by introducing uh, good bacteria and then they are uh, fermenting using uh, lactose and they convert into lactic acid and the ph is controlled and then when we see that the required aroma and flavor is achieved we change uh, we stop the fermentation by rapid cooling so fermentation requires or bacteria needs proper temperature so we stop we stop giving that proper temperature and then that's how we can stop the fermentation process and uh, keep our product uh, up to the requirement so what are the needs of the bacteria they need food they need temperature they need time and they need water so uh, how we can stop them by avoiding giving them these conditions and uh, temperature is one of the required condition for bacteria so that's why it is preferred to keep your food chilled when you are not using it so immediately after eating consuming you transfer the balanced food or product to the refrigeration it can slow down or stop the bacterial activity so 10 to 20 minutes bacteria can split into two so if you give them more time at their required temperature they can grow very fast so if you eat something and leave the food on the table our room temperatures are 25 30 degree so they can multiply and they can repl replicate in 10 to 20 minutes and then it will go on if you leave it for a longer time so better you food safety for the safety of the food anything any product should be uh, chilled or kept in uh, or other products which ne needs uh, uh, freezing so you should keep it there like meat so uh, 
bacteria we called a danger zone danger zone is 5 degree to 63 degree as you can see on the slide uh, the danger zone is 5 degree to 63 degree so it means if we keep our food stuff for, at this temperature bacteria will grow very fast so below 5 degree is refrigeration temperature and uh, so it will sleep the bacteria is sleeping at that time it's not dead it's not killed so it is sleeping only so once we move this temp our product from this temperature to above 5 degree it will start activating so as you can see on the right side of the slide and then for 20 degree to 40 degree is their optimal growth temperature and they will enjoy eating our food and making um, chemicals and toxins in our food and which can make us sick so above 63 degree is where our cooking process starts so cooking uh, heating so that we can kill the bacteria 100 degree we can kill the bacteria as you guys knows that pasteurization is around 78 degree so that's where bacteria can be killed we call them living bacteria can be killed not the cells so bacteria come from what are the sources of bacteria they come from people when we go out when we touch dirty stuff we bring the bacteria and then we touch our food so it will be transferred or cross contaminated to our food it comes from pest and pests are you know cockroaches flies the, which are the main source which go to the, uh, we stay in the dirty places and with their body they bring the germs to our food air uh, dirty ventilation system and you have seen like when it is humid it is more uh, people will become sick or because bacteria need moisture so in 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 such weather it is it is more, uh, growing very fast if it needs uh, it has food it has all these conditions food water and temperature right temperature animals and birds raw food uh, raw food when we are bringing any raw food it contains a lot of microorganisms and so what we do we wash them we cook them so these activities are done to remove the contamination from the raw food so what are the methods to kill uh, bacteria one is heat but which is more domestic method you can say or more uh, most of the industries are using only this method to kill the uh, bacteria and microorganisms which includes pasteurization ust temperature ust treatment ultra high temperature treatment uh, use of radiations uv rays uh, uv rays are used and now some industries are moving for uv pasteurization also so it is not yet common but some industries have started already already using uv pasteurization it can save time it can save other um, chemical changes in the product so but it how expensive it is it depends on the availability use of chemicals we are we are using chemicals in our daily life for the disinfection hand sanitization so these chemicals are used for killing the bacteria covid 19 we added actually before some time uh, so now uh, how we do uh, we, we can avoid all this by maintaining a good personal hygiene so what is good personal hygiene we should wash our hands we should cover any cuts uh, or sores or any uh, injuries our body should be clean we call it intestine should be clean so that it doesn't uh, it is not a growth place for the bacteria hair should be well neat washed cleaned and air mouth and nose 
and clothes. So the, all these things matters. So when we, you see kids are getting sick uh, quite frequently, it means one of these things they are not controlling. So or all of these things they are not controlling. So we should focus on uh, these things to avoid sickness, illness, or any. So we while washing hands, it's it's not only just put your hands under the water or fingertips under the water and wash the hands. So it's it's basically uh, rinsing the uh, dirt and then putting the soap, rubbing it um, in all the fingers and then washing it nicely. This will stop your contamination to food, to yourself, and it will it helps a lot. So make it a habit of washing hands um, quite frequently. And especially after touching, you think it's, 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 it's a dirty or contaminated uh, stuff. Uh, after washing, we can disinfect our hands by using any kind of sanitizer. So, uh, some facts here: so forty percent of forty percent of adults carry staphylococcus in their mouth and nose. Uh, so, when we when our uh, we carry such kind of uh, germs on our body, so whenever they will find a wound or a cut, they will enter, they will grow there, and they will they can give us illness. So mask is used to avoid any kind of uh, uh, food contamination from the mouth. Okay, so this is a general practice where we see uh, the trash cans and the garbage bins are overfilled and they are not removed in a timely manner. And this is how we give a breeding place or a growing place for the microorganisms. So at home also, as we saw earlier that bacteria needs time to grow, food to grow. So this is the place where they have everything. So if you give them time, they will grow and spread all over your kitchen, your house and your industry. So whenever you throw any garbage, try to discard or dispose as soon as possible to avoid the growth of bacteria. So this is, as I mentioned, uh, color-coded equipments. So we can keep some separate uh, color for food contact surfaces, for floors, for uh, toilets. So this is how we can segregate our cleaning equipments by uh, to avoid any kind of cross contamination. Same thing with the knives, like if I use a knife for cutting any meat or anything, I should not be using it for cutting a dairy product, cheese or any other stuff. So there should be separate knife in ideal condition or it should be cleaned and then used for the other products. Okay, so pasteurized products. Uh, we are making uh, pasteurized products. And uh, so as you know, like 78 degree for 15 seconds. So time and temperature are the main thing for pasteurization. Uh, so if we say pasteurization uh, only for temperature 78 degree, it's not done. So we have to accommodate the kill rate, we call it kill rate. So in this, at this temperature, the uh, bacteria will be killed, all the vegetative forms, or we call it uh, living bacteria, pathogens can be killed. So the, the, according to different recipes, we are using actually different temperatures for different products, but it it is like as book it, it can be 78 degree for 15 seconds and then we go up as required so uh, so pasteurized products so 
as i mentioned pasteurized products are killing the pathogens or living forms of the bacteria they are not killing the spores of the bacteria which are you can say the cells of the bacteria which are protected by a coating so pasteurized products we kill it and then we pack it and then we keep it under refrigerated conditions refrigerated conditions are below 5 degree so it means they should not grow so after a while the spores will hatch and they a new life will start so that's why we slow down that process by refrigeration so any pasteurized products cannot be stored outside and it the life of the pasteurized products is also less as compared to usg products because of the same reason so cold chain uh, from for farm to fork or from uh, farm to consumer we should maintain a cold chain in case of actually all the food products but for dairy products especially so from farm the chilling of the milk until it reaches the customer is very important and we should keep it a cold chain now suppose uh, i brought a milk from uh, a farm in a tanker and its temperature is not good so on the way only it will spoil same thing when i have pasteurized it i have packed it and then my delivery car uh, refrigerated system fails and it stays on the road at 40 degree for few hours so it will spoil the food so or it will spoil the milk so better we uh, or it is a must to keep the cold chain in place from farm to the consumer long life products um, we call them usg treated products also so milks we can store at 18 to 25 degree and juice products which are usg treated also can be stored at 25 to 30 degree examples now for milk uh, for usg products we are targeting uh, the spores also and then we measure the kill rate and then we describe how much should be the temperature and time so it can be few couple of seconds in case of time and the temperature can go up to 140 degree 136 to 140 degree so based on the product and uh, in that examples like we have uh, full cream milk half cream milk strawberry chocolate banana liquid cream uh in juices also there are examples apple juice orange juice nectar in uh, one more thing i will like to add like in middle east most of the companies are recombined in case of usg products they are using milk powder and they are recombining it with the required ingredients and then they are making the milk so some com- companies like almarai also they have uh, fresh milk and they are using for certain products but not all the entire product range is uh, fresh milk and mostly here it is uh, recombined milk so if we talk about so we are talking about now usg so usg we you can say take the milk pasteurize it and then send it for usg treatment which can be 136 137 degree for 3 4 5 seconds and then we so now your product is sterile aseptic and then we have to pack it in aseptic packaging so what we did we took the product which is contaminated pasteurized it kill the pathogens kill the living bacteria 
and then we gave USG treatment to target the spores. Uh, and then we now anything inside the product is killed. So now we have to make sure nothing else enters the product. So then it has to go for uh, under aseptic conditions. So the, the lines, the machine, they are all, the tanks, they are all under aseptic conditions and they are uh, uh, kept secure that no, nothing can enter. So that's why uh, Tetra Pak is used, paper is used, which is uh, secure for the aseptic products. And it has six layers, as you can see, the, the outermost uh, layer is LPD, uh, like we call polyethylene layer. Then there is paper layer, which is used also for printing, uh, plus it gives strength. Uh, then there is lamination layer, then aluminum layer, which prevents uh, from light and to enter the product. Then there are inner two uh, polyethylene layers. The innermost polyethylene layer is used for sealing this pack. So we, dig, we do heat sealing uh, and these two layers are sealed together uh, from uh, all the sides and that's how we make it secure. Any pinhole, any damage to the pack will can lead to the entrance of microorganisms and they can spoil the food. So whenever you are going to market, you are taking any product, make sure that the pack is not damaged. Make sure that the product uh, pack is not leaking or anything. So if it is leaking, it means bacteria can enter and it can grow. And in case of juices, mold growth can also happen. So you guys might have seen the videos or anything like uh, if there is a mold growth, it means there is an entry of air. It means there is an entry of uh, microorganisms in the product. So which can happen, even damage can happen during handling of the product in the supermarket, in the transportation. So it can damage. In the factory also it can damage. So as I mentioned, uh, the zones, uh, uh, we, you, we can have one common zone uh, in the industry which is outside where nothing is required. Then we can have uh, one zone which are, where some preliminary controls are required. Then we can have the production or packing area where uh, more restrictions are required like from shoes, uniform, uh, hair nets, gloves. So based on that, we can define the zones. And as you can see in this, we have somewhere eliminated, uh, mentioned the prohibited things in the zone, eating or drinking any other product or any other material in the food factories are not allowed so that it can bring the contamination or it can be a source of contamination to the area. So that's why it's not allowed and based on zones. So outermost, less, less restriction than little restriction. So innermost, the most restricted area where you see that your food can be contaminated. You can transfer any danger to the food. Nowadays, uh, as part of food safety, food defense is also... Uh, threat okay so uh, before it was only HACCP now HACCP is had a hazard analysis at critical control points so now we are doing TESAP also threat analysis at critical control points so there is food defense is also in all the food safety standards they are talking about food defense also and it's protection of food from intentional adulteration by biological, chemical, physical, or radiological agents. So this is also now part of food safety and we uh, take it as an abbreviation alert, assure what you do you know about foods arriving at your establishment 
So we should make sure that the foods arriving are not uh, adulterated or there is no, it's, it, it, it should be checked before entering the facility. Uh, look, how do you maintain security in your establishment? Employees control and their excess, they cannot go to, if someone becomes angry on the company and they can intentionally, intentionally poison the food or put some kind of chemical in the food to give harm to the company or any other employee so they can, so we should be having control of that. These emotions are with the people and we should be uh, taking correct measures to control such conditions. So entrance to unauthorized people, uh, restricted entrance to for the open product areas, these are the controls we have to. Uh, so, and what, how do we react? This should be a plan. So if we doubt any product, uh, if it is, it has, a, 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 it is contaminated, how we deal with that kind of product, that also is, should be defined. So access control, like from one room to another, another room in your university also, I believe that you will be having different like labs, where some people can enter and some cannot enter. So that's how we can maintain the access control uh, at different areas. Food defense measures, uh, what we are using is inspection, expansion of materials received, uh, how we are loading the vehicles. They are locked, they are secured, they are monitored. And uh, any visitors which are coming, they should be escorted. They should not be left unattended. Uh, so this is how we are doing and 24 hour surveillance so that if there is any activity, it uh, it should be controlled. Now in the at the kitchen level, uh, that is important, like same thing what we mentioned to avoid cross contamination by segregating food from one type of food to other type of food and by uh, cleaning the utensils, the tools, and wearing proper PPEs. And if we are using one PPE for like, if you are handling fish, and then you are using the same PPEs, and then you come to the dairy side, and you cannot handle that in the same PPE. So all the PPEs should be discarded, disposed, and then uh, new PPEs should be taken before entering or handling other uh, type of food. Uh, so vegetables, uh, dry ingredients, frozen items. So these are all should be segregated, kept separately, handled separately, different uh, cleaning tools, different uh, cutting or cooking tools, and different knives. So this is how we can avoid uh, cross-contamination. So raw materials, how we should store is uh, also a matter, not only finished goods. So it starts from, as we mentioned, farm to the customer. So raw materials also have different uh, storage temperatures. So each raw material should be handled accordingly and if it should, it is exposed to any uh, wrong temperature conditions, it should be checked, evaluated, and if it is not into its proper condition, it should be discarded. So uh, spoiled raw materials should not be used to uh, spoil the rest of the product. So any anything what we can see if it is contaminated by even by chemical, by microorganisms, it should be discarded. So, we talk about meat, chicken, cleaning utensils, and so what we do when we uh, heat the food, we kill the microorganisms, and we uh, 
So same thing if if what we are doing with the chilled food, as I mentioned, there are only few types of bacteria, uh, which we call it cyclotrophic, which can grow in the low temperatures, but most of the bacteria needs high temperatures. So we should keep in mind when we are handling foods. So warm foods should not, they should be well cooked and to kill bacteria and then consumed immediately. If not consumed immediately, then they should be refrigerated. So this is all from my side. Uh, I think so it's 9.53 and I already took some initial time. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's it from my side. If you guys have any questions. Thank Excuse you, me. Sir, there is an interactive section. Students will ask you some questions related to the topic. Okay. Okay, just one second, let me bring it up. Yes. Hello. Uh, sir, what measures are in place to ensure the cleanliness and sanitation of milking equipments? Okay. Uh, cleanliness of milking equipments is uh, the most important step, actually, where everything starts. If that is not done, it means we are going to spoil the milk. So, uh, first thing is it should be rinsed properly. It should be uh, with warm water. It should... Uh, you can use some chemicals also, which are uh, kind of denatured with the uh, organic matter, and then we can use it. So that's, uh, there is sanitizer also, sanitizing tablets are available at farm levels. And uh, we are especially like for dairy products, for denaturation, uh, some people are using caustic soda also for cleaning purpose. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, how are the dairy cows and their living conditions monitored to prevent the contamination of milk? Uh, they, they should be uh, well monitored. They should, first thing, a, uh, a cow should be ha happy. Uh, they should be kept under happy conditions, not under stress, any kind of stress. So which now, if you talk about stress, it will be like temperature condition, what temperature they are in, uh, how much clean area it is. Uh, it should not be filthy area. There is separate food for each cow. So if, if I give a common food for 10 cows, it means the stronger one will eat more and the weak ones will eat less. So we should... Uh, divide the food equally among all the cows. And then uh, before milking, we should wash uh, the teats. And if required, we should sanitize them. We should be uh, cleaning our hands. Uh, or if there is milking cups, it should be cleaned and sanitized before the start of the milking. And uh, so water, food, and the conditions for the cow are very important 
to ensure the good milking. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon. Sir, is low-fat milk healthier than the whole milk? Low-fat milk is healthier in one sense only. Uh, if you want to avoid the saturated fats. So saturated fats are uh, for uh, people having... Uh, uh, heart problems or cardiovascular problems, uh, they say that to consume less of saturated fats, they should be consuming more of uh, unsaturated fats. So full fat milk is having a good number of saturated fats and low fat milk is having less number of saturated fats. So in that way only, uh, it can uh, be healthier. Low fat milk can be healthier for people having uh, any cardiovascular problems. So, Thank but you, if sir. Your body, yeah. uh, sir, what are the tests that are used to detect and control pathogens like E. coli, salmonella, etc. in dairy products? Uh, these are micro, microbiological uh, uh, test and we do uh, take the sample and that is the same uh, with the media, grow them uh, and uh, check with the required agar and uh, if there is any, uh, there are other uh, quick methods also, but uh, in our company, I can say we are using the agar and there are some films also. Uh, which uh, we use, and that is these uh, fi uh, these films are actually media films. So we use it as a uh, growth media, and uh, not there are two ways like petri dish, uh, and then we put them uh, growth media, and then we inoculate, and then we see the growth. And there are these films also where we can inoculate and see the growth at different temperatures. So incubators are set at different temperatures, uh, 35 degree, 50, up to 55 degree. And uh, there are some uh, uh, bacteria which needs higher temperature. So that's why we check it for all. Spore forming bacteria is actually uh, checked at 55 degree. So, and thermo uh, pathogens are checked at, we are checking at 32 degree too. Incubation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, how is the quality and safety of dairy product like cheese, yogurt, and butter maintained throughout their dairy pro production process? Uh, they are maintained, uh, as I mentioned, any anything, uh, any kind of uh, bacteria, they need specific temperatures. So, and they need a uh, place to grow. So, first thing is the hygiene of the equipments, hygiene of the people, hygiene of the area. So, that is the main name, any unquestionable thing that we should be maintaining. So the all the lines, equipments, machines should be cleaned and there should not be any residue and clean with the proper cleaning chem chemicals at proper temperatures and then sanitize them and then we uh, process them or pack them under hygienic conditions. Second thing is the people working there, they should be 
they should not be bringing any contamination from with their clothes with their hands with themselves uh, so it should be uh, 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 personal hygiene should be well monitored and then it third thing is the temperature conditions and these cheese specially then it will it should go to the required storage temperature which can be freezer so that's how they and and you know that uh, uh, cheese are cultured products so they, they we are using good bacteria so there should not be any bad bacteria uh, in the process in the whole process so if, if there is a bad bacteria we are giving incubation we are giving fermentation uh, time uh, for coagulation so if that is uh, so we call them bacteriophage also which can uh, affect our good bacteria so bad bacteria should not enter any from any place hopefully i have answered thank you sir thank requesting devika as of 30 c food science and quality control to propose the vote of thanks good afternoon Sorry. everyone <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Department of Food Science and Quality Control, it is my privilege to thank you all for attending the webinar titled Food Safety in Dairy Industry as a part of Dr. Varghese Kurian Lecture Series 2. Gratitude, gratitude is extended to our resource person, Mr. Aminula Abusa, Assistant Compliance Manager, Quality Assurance Department, Danish Dairy, Kuwait, for sharing his expertise and fruitful insights. A lot of information regarding the advances in dairy technology has been provided to us today in the lecture series commemorating the memory of Dr. Varghese Kurian. Thank you, sir. Heartfelt gratitude is extended to Assistant Professor Anju Anacharyan, our teachers, Assistant Professor Ritu Susan Babu, Assistant Professor Renu Simanu, Assistant Professor Steffi Susa Thomas for assisting in the conduct of this lecture series. Thank you, teachers. I would also like to thank all my dear friends, students, and teachers from various institutions who have made an effort to attend this webinar today. Special mention of gratitude is extended to the students of Food Science Department of our college for the various roles done in making this webinar a grand success. Last but not the least, your feedback is valuable to us to ensure improvements in future webinar conducted by the department. Thank you one and all. Thank you very much, all, and sorry for initial uh, disturbance and uh, problem in connectivity. And I, do, I still don't know the reason why laptop was not connected. Uh, mic was not. Now I'm using laptop and mic, uh, phone. So sorry. And uh, any questions and anything you can approach me, and uh, it will. It's nice meeting you all, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Hi guys. Yeah, yeah. Hi Gauri.
So, so when we call it as a marketing skills to, to advise us what to do, we will discuss many names. And, and then one, one name that emerged for someone, Anand, Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit, Sanskrit means priceless. priceless. called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do. We will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do. We will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do. We will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless.
called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do. We will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do. We will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do. We will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do. We will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul. Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless.
So when we call in some marketing skills to advise us what to do, we will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul, Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do. We will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul, Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do. We will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul, Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless. called in some marketing skills to advise us what to do. We will discuss many names. And then one name that emerged was Amul, Anand Milk Union Limited. And Amulya in Sanskrit means priceless.
Good afternoon all. Inviting your resource person, Ms. Veena Swati, Quality Assurance Officer, Intel Ventures Private Limited, Kimfra Park, Elamannur, to lead the technical session to titled Dairy Products and Processing. Thank you so much, Anjali. And um, here I am going to share the slide. So a very good afternoon to you all. Um, myself, Veena Swati, and I'm currently working as a research associate in Pushpagiri Research Center, Tirvalla. And I have been working in the dairy industry past one year. And I'm very happy and thankful to Ms. Steffi for giving me this opportunity to uh, attending this lecture section. Thank you, Steffi. And um, here I wish to take a uh, Am I audible now? Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So I wish to take a, a topic about dairy products and processing. So first, move on to the introduction. So as we all know that the milk is considered as a complete food because it contains much protein, essential vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, antibodies. So it's a com uh, regarded as a complete food. Apart from that, the milk is also known as a perishable food. Perishable means it will get easily spoiled if it is not processed or uh, does not prop uh, properly maintain the temperature. So it is considered as a perishable food. So we have to uh, go through various process to uh, make this perishable uh, one, perishable milk to uh, complete uh, the um, uh, good one. So here I am taking wish to take about the processing of raw milks like uh, uh, processing of raw milks into products like milk, curd, butter, ghee and paneer. So uh, the important uh, process which is occur in a dairy industry. This is uh, irreplaceable placeable um, for procedure and the first one is chilling pasteurization and homogenization so i will um, explain it later and uh, the dairy industry covers the main three area that is well, first one is production and second one is processing and third one is distribution of mil milk and milk products so uh, i'm going to take a section of uh, milk production so uh, this milk production, uh, in milk production, we receive a milk um, from a tank. Usually we receive the milk from uh, BMC. BMC means bulk milk cooler. In BMC, they receive uh, the milk from the farmers. They collect the milk from the farmers and they will chill the, uh, the milk to minus one degree Celsius. And after that, um, it will load to tanker and the tanker will uh, reach the dairy industry and first uh, the, when when whether whenever the tanker reach we will first check the temperature first whether the tem um, temperature of the milk is properly maintained we have to check the temperature first it should be if it is um, below 4 it is considered as good and if the temperature is get increased it is high chance of uh, getting spoiled easily so the next thing we check is acidity of the milk and the acidity was 0.135 to 0.144. Fortunately, I didn't include uh, the quality parameters uh, here. If you are interested, let me know. I will explain it all later. And um, after um, we uh, the quality persons accept the milk, then the milk is uh, first goes through through this filter a filtration procedure. And we can see this is a stainless steel. Inside this stainless steel, the uh, a filter a cloth was uh, fixed, and the milk will pass through this uh, um, filter cloth. Uh, to, uh, the uh, chemical, uh, the physical hazards which present in the milk will uh, went off. That means the physical hazard include. Uh, some something dirt or hair something maybe there so such physical hazard will be um, eliminated during this filtration process after that the filtration the separation of all part of the milk fat is done that means 
means uh, the standardization procedure. Uh, I have to give an example first. Um, if we receive a um, uh, raw milk which contain a fat of 4.5, we have to change the 0.5 fat to cow milk, which can be 3.2 fat. It's a standard value according to FSSA. For cow milk, the fat is 3.2. So we have to uh, separate out the um, fat from 4.5 to 3.2. So for that, we use a separator. And in the diary industry, we only use uh, a significant separator uh, for separation of cream. After the separation and the standardization, the very, very important process was pasteurization. Pasteurization, if the pasteurization is not present in dairy industry, it is feel to be incomplete. So the main part of the dairy industry was pasteurizer. And the pasteurization procedure, we have to kill the pathogenic microorganisms, which is present in the raw milk. There is three type of pasteurization was there. First one is batch pasteurization. Uh, um, in that batch pasteurization, the temperature was 62 degrees Celsius and the time was minutes. And the second one is flash pasteurization. In this, the temperature is 72 degrees Celsius to um, 15 seconds. And the the third one is UHD, that is ultra high temperature. And the temperature is about 135 degrees Celsius for two seconds only. So commonly in the dairy industry, we are using a uh, flash pasteurization. And um, in the pasteurization, uh, some pathogenic microorganisms like Coxiella, Bernetai, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, these are pathogenic microorganisms. These are get uh, uh, destroyed during the process of pasteurization. Then the, one of the important procedures was homogenization. Homogenization uh, is a procedure in the fact globules are uniformly distributed in the milk. For example, if we buy a cow milk from a um, uh, shop uh, there we can't see any fat layer formation that is because of homogenization homogenization is not properly done the milk is considered as not bad uh, it's considered as bad so the proper homogenization is very important and uh, this is homogenizer which is used in the industry and uh, there is small hole there and through that hole the milk is uh, entered into the homogenizer and then we uh, applied a uh, high pressure high pressure of 2500 to 3000 uh, psi pressure and likewise the homogenization was uh, done am i audible now Hello. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, it's all uh, after homogenization. Yes. Hello. Can you now? Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am, it's all Okay, then the next procedure was after homogenization as the next procedure was chilling. In the chilling and chilling, the pasteurization, uh, we have um, gone through the temperature of 72 degrees Celsius. We have, so we have to cool down the milk. Uh, so we have chilled the milk uh, for uh, four degrees Celsius, um, below four degrees Celsius. And after chilling the milk, uh, either we kept a um, store in a silo. Uh, silo is a place where the milk was uh, keeping and uh, or otherwise we will pack it directly and distribute the final product to the market. Here I am uh, included a flowchart, what I was explained later. Just go through the uh, flowchart. Here we can see the milk receive. We receive the milk after that filtration and um, maybe it will store. And after that, we will separate the cream. That cream is later used for um, butter production and the ghee production. And the next important thing is pasteurization and after that homogenization and the packing and storage and distribution. Okay, uh, then uh, the next uh, one is curd. So uh, this curd is a semi-solid product and it's a fermented uh, product and we are uh, using lactic acid bacteria for the uh, soaring of this uh, curd and there are mainly two uh, type of curd was there one is skim milk curd and the other one is toned milk curd the sk in skim milk curd the fat was zero and in toned milk curd the fat was three that's the difference between skim milk curd and the toned milk curd so uh, so this is a flow diagram 
uh, that was uh, take the process that was taking in the curd production. So for the first thing, the major thing we have to um, clean in this storage silo. Uh, so the one of the important thing is we have to clean every utensils or the silo. If it is not properly clean, it will lead to cross contamination. So we have to properly clean, and the quality person should assure uh, the things are properly clean. After cleaning the uh, silo, the milk was processed. That means, as I told you early, the the uh, fat, the raw milk fat, we have 4.5, and we want to make into skim milk um, with the fat of zero. So uh, that will the cream. Uh, filtration that a cream separation was taking place there so likewise the processing of skim milk or if it is a toned milk the fat was three likewise the processing was done and after that there we give the pasteurization and here the pasteurization temperature was 90 degrees celsius and then uh, we uh, uh, that's cool down this pasteurized milk to inoculation temperature and um, to lower and the inoculation temperature in the inoculation temperature we are adding the culture the culture we used is commonly mesophilic and thermophilic bacteria and the culture addition was done at uh, 43 to 45 degrees celsius and um, after that we will give an agitation for 15 minutes to mix the culture in the milk um, milk so we will give an agitation after that uh, agitation, the, uh, the curd will be packed in the packages and it will shift to the incubation room. The importance of incubation is to enhance the um, growth of this added uh, microorganism. And the incubation is about four to um, three to four hours. Um, and after three to four hours, the product was get set set and it will transfer to the cold room and the cold room um, the temperature was 5 degrees celsius and if we, if we transfer the milk to cold room the uh, growth of bacteria get arrested so there is no more uh, bacteria growth was occurred and uh, the after one day the product was distributed to the uh, distributors and uh, next one is butter production and butter is the fat of cream and um, and it is uh, having a fat of 80 to 82 percentage and it's contain a solid not fat of two and the water content of the butter is 16 degree, 16 percentage and it's also contains some vitamin a and b so the cream uh, we used or the cream we separated um, earlier we are used using here for the butter production and the cream having an acidity of 0.06 to 0.08 is usually used for the production of butter and uh, here is a, a flow chart which show the uh, production of butter first we have to clean the churner and this is the churner uh, where we add the um, cream in opposite to this side we, there is an opening through that opening we add the cream into the churner and uh, for about 1 to 1.5 hours the churner will rotate and by the time the butter will um, the cream will change to butter and the churning of cream is usually occurs 35 to 40 rpm and uh, uh, the QC will check the, whether the cream is turned into butter and the butter fat is usually 80 percentage and after that uh, this butter uh, here there is a one mold is present so through the mold it will come in a rectangular shape and we will cut the butter uh, in a uh, according to the quantity and we will we'll pack the butter in a butter box and it is stored in a cold room which contains 6 degrees celsius cold room and the next one was paneer production <laughs> Paneer is considered as an indigenous product, okay, and uh, paneer is usually made by uh, adding a coagulant to the milk. Uh, acid coagulation is usually occur in the paneer production, and the commonly used acid was citric acid, tartaric acid, and lactic acid. If we eat that paneer uh, raw, then we can uh, taste a mild acidic flavor, and there is slight sweet taste also. And the moisture content of this uh, paneer was 70 70 percentage and the fat content of the paneer uh, we get is 22 to 25 percentage and here we have the uh, uh, flow chart of the processing of paneer so the commonly used um, uh, 
milk was uh, raw milk that is the fat will be 4.5 the raw milk is directly used for the production of paneer and uh, after that the, uh, this milk is heated to uh, 90 degrees celsius and it will transfer to the paneer vat this is the picture that showing the the uh, heated milk is uh, transferred to the paneer vat after that we cool down cool down the temperature to 80 degrees celsius and um, at the temperature of 80 degrees celsius we add in the coagulant usually we add glacial acetic acid as a coagulant after addition of coagulant we uh, mix the thing very thoroughly and as it we can see that the way will form the uh, board upper side and then the bottom we have seen some curd particles so we didn't use that way so we drain out the way and uh, this curd particles we have transformed it to this hoop um, we will transfer this to the hoops and we will give a pressure from here and the pressure usually given is a uh, 5 to 6 psi for 30 to 40 minutes by the time the uh, the thing was uh, get into a rectangular shape and it is not as mold and we will keep the mold in a pasteurized water for a 6 degrees celsius for 1 to 1.5 hours that is for the uh, proper um, uh, maintain the proper texture of the paneer we have put the um, this paneer uh, mold into uh, the chilled water after that we have mechanically cutting the mold into different uh, quantity and uh, the, we are using a, a vacuum pack Packaging for this paneer because in vacuum packaging the oxygen was um, taken off so the shelf life was about 30 to 45 days we can give for the shelf life of paneer so that's this is because of we are using vacuum packaging and after packaging it will uh, transfer to the cold storage room am i audible at all yes ma'am Okay, the last one is the ghee production. So the ghee production, the ghee is uh, usually uh, taken from a product from animal milk and we have to uh, extract the fat from the milk and we are using that cream to make the ghee. And the ghee, it has a special aroma and flavor. If the fermentation of the cream was done, uh, the, the aroma and flavor will be more. So we are usually used a fermented cream. And the moisture content of this uh, Mm, ghee should be 0.3 if it is get increased it will um, get rancid very fast and the free fatty acid is 1.4 and the ghee is also contains some essential vitamin a d e and k and also some essential fatty acid and uh, the uh, uh, the flow chart here i am given which include the production of ghee here we uh, use three things for the preparation for the production of ghee that is ghee kettle settling tank and the clarifier and in the ghee kettle um, so we first we have to clean the ghee kettle settling tank and clarifier so uh, when we uh, the quality person assure that it is properly clean we are adding the cream into this settling tank sorry ghee kettle and we will giving a he heat of 115 to 118 degrees celsius for uh, the making of ghee after reaching this temperature the quality persons will check whether the flavor is good or not and um, after that we will transfer this uh, ghee to the settling tank and here the temperature is reduced to 60 degrees celsius and then after um, from the settling tank we are transferred uh, this ghee to the class Clarify. In order to clarify the ghee, uh, that means some sediments are there. No, we have to separate it out, and we will pack the pure ghee in a uh, sealing or sealing jar. We have to uh, collecting and filling and sealing the jar. If the jar is not properly sealed, it will leads to the rancidity of the product. So the sealing is proper, and it uh, the ghee is not stored in a cold room temperature. It is always uh, kept in a 21 degree celsius or either in a room temperature we are keeping it's very important that uh, the temperature of the keeping temperature of the product is also very important if it is not properly kept in a uh, standard temperature it will lead to the um, spoilage of the product and here i am including uh, the packaging of milk and milk products here the packing machine of uh, milk uh, here i 
include the picture and here is the uh, zipper packing machine so packaging is also very important for the uh, production of milk and milk products that means um, we have to keep the product in a proper properly packed items okay uh, the we have to protect the product from bacteriological activities from light and oxygen contamination if it is the ghee is getting up uh, get oxidized it will turn to rans uh, the rancidity will occur so it's really uh, sealed and we have to keep the uh, things about the products uh, dairy products and uh, we are using a uh, food graded polyethylene uh, which was um, allowed by the fssi and if it is stored for a um, long time uh, the shelf life is given for a long time we will give an additional layer of aluminium too as uh, we can see in nandini we, uh, there is a tetra pack is there so we can keep the milk in 30 days and the, uh, that's a uh, uh, that's an Im uh, improved version and we can kept it for um, uh, three, 30 days and pet bottles are we are used that is polyethylene terephthalate bottles are we are using in in our industry so um, it is very important to keep the uh, uh, the processing and uh, the processing should be in a proper manner if the processing is not done properly it will um, affect the dairy products and this much is my section uh, if there are any queries let me know um, I will clarify thank you hello I'm an article yes miss yeah okay you can ask uh, if you have doubts you can ask either you can leave or thank you ma'am ma'am there okay. is an interactive section students will ask okay. you some questions related to the topic okay ma'am is organic milk uh, any better than the regular milk I think organic milk is better than uh, regular milk because um, in a regular milk, as I am working in this dairy field, uh, there is a lot of adulteration should be occurring in uh, regular milk. So it's better to consume that uh, organic milk. Thank you. Ma'am, can plant-based milk reduce greenhouse gas emission? Um, I didn't hear you. Is plant-based milk better than uh, dairy milk in case of environmental aspects? Plant-based milk? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I didn't get it actually. Uh, okay. Hello? Uh, ma'am, I asked the question that is plant-based milk better in case of environmental aspects, like pollution um, or anything? That I really don't know. Sorry. Oh, okay, man. Okay. Okay. Ma'am, is it better to buy raw milk and boil or to buy packed pasteurized milk? It's better to uh, buy uh, packed pasteurized milk uh, because pasteurization, if we, uh, the proper pasteurization and the packaging was proper, it will, um, uh, what, the, the shelf life was good and it, uh, it will not spoil much. And if the pasteurization was done, the most of the pathogenic organism will destroy at a level. So it's better uh, pasteurized milk. Good afternoon, Miss. What measures are taken to ensure dairy products? Uh, can you please ask one more? Miss, uh, Hello? what measures are taken to ensure the oh. safety of dairy products? Uh, the measures first we taken was, uh, of course, after.
personal hygiene and the proper cleaning of the utensils and the storage the style uh, that we kept the milk and uh, of course the pasteurization is one of the important procedure uh, to uh, one of the important procedure to keep the uh, the safety of the sorry the quality of the milk thank you thank you miss okay Thank you, ma'am. So, Kishan okay. Riya Shibu of First DC Food Science and Quality Control to propose the vote of thanks. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Department of Food Science and Quality Control, it is my privilege to thank you all for attending the webinar titled Dairy Products and Processing as a part of the Dr. Varghese Korean Lecture Series Two. Gratitude is extended to our resource person. Ms. Veena Swadi, Quality Assurance Officer in Kell Ventures Private Limited, Kinfra Park, Ilamannu, Research Associate, Pushpagiri Research Center, Tiruvalla. A lot of information regarding the advances in dairy technology has been provided to us today in the lecture series commemorating the memory of Dr. Varghese Kurian. Thank you, sir. Heartfelt gratitude is extended to Assistant Professor Anju Anacharyan, our teachers, Assistant Professor Ritu Susan Babu, Assistant Professor Renu Simanu, Assistant Professor Steffi Sosha Thomas for assisting in the conduct of this lecture series. I would also like to thank all my dear friends and students and teachers from various institutions who have made an effort to attend this webinar today. Special mention of gratitude is extended to the students of the Food Science Department of our college for the various roles donned in making this webinar a grand success. Last but not the least, your feedback is valuable to us to ensure improvements in future webinar conducted by the department. Thank you, one and all.